Today we're building the used PC of the month and I'm running out of coolers. So I've got to use an AliExpress $25 cooler and I'm running out of power supplies too. This is the last $10 budget power supply that I have on hand. And with that, I've got to get a new hard drive too. Ran out of hard drives, but we do have an X58 motherboard. This is the Asus X58DE motherboard. Absolutely amazing, really good VRM. I just love this thing and it's already pretty clean too. So we won't have to give that a cleanse, but what we will have to do with it is take off the North Bridge heatsink because they usually get pretty bad after a while and that can affect performance of these motherboards and overclocking. Though the graphics card, that is dirty, so that will be getting a cleanse. And let's take a look at the prices that we paid for all this gear. Now, some of it I did get donated for free, but I will price it up on current market prices on what you can go and buy it for. So we've got DDR3 memory, 12 gigabyte kit. You can get this for around 60 USD. One terabyte hard drive, 45 USD. X5670, 41 USD. Motherboard and X58 motherboard picked this up for $60 and then the graphics card the GTX 780 We got this for hundred and seventeen dollars in a used parts hunt that cooler of course $25 as I said in the intro and the power supply $10 and the last piece of the puzzle you probably saw the thumbnail We've ran out of cases too. So we had to chop up an old Dell case Hence the term for this build is called bottoms up now with all that aside let's build ourselves a 358 dollars gaming pc or if you're in australia a 457 aud gaming pc Welcome back to Tech Yes City. So you're probably wondering what is going on with this build here. And we've got a full-size ATX uh, X58 motherboard. Now this is all I've got in stock. I don't have any micro ATX boards on hand and we've got a micro ATX case. And it's a Sunday so I can't go out and buy a case either. And honestly, this is the whole thing. This is what the channel's about, is making something unique. So what we've done here is we've grinded off the bottom of this case and then pretty much stuck at bottoms up and hence the name for today's build. But now it's time to put this thing together. So we just finished bottoms up now and you guys are probably wondering what exactly is this abomination right here and this is a do whatever it takes to get the best price performance 
and also the best overclocks on a budget. So let's tune this thing and see how hard she can go. So what we could see in those benchmarks was phenomenal performance. I was really blown away by how good the Xeon is holding up in 2017. Now granted, I did overclock it to 4.3 GHz, but that is why I generally like to choose the X5670 variant over the X5650. Doesn't put as much of a strain on your motherboard, does give you a bit of flexibility, especially with that multiplier. And then of course that $25 AliExpress cooler. I think I'll have to make a dedicated video on this thing it blew me away. I couldn't believe that I was getting 4.3 gigahertz with a $25 air cooler off AliExpress. So actually both the CPU and the cooler, you can buy them at any time. So these aren't really deals that I get off deal hunting. They're just deals you can get off AliExpress. So I'll put the links in the description below if you want to check them out. It was for the other parts, of course, the motherboard is what makes this build complete. We picked that up for 60 USD. Now that generally is a really good deal on an X58 motherboard. But keep in mind when I searched on Gumtree, for example, I found a $80 X58 board with a cooler included. That's an extremely good deal. It even had an i7-920 included. So you could get that board, buy that Xeon off AliExpress, and you could have happy days like I've got right beside me. However, the Gravis card, pretty decent deal for a GTX 780. My viewers on Twitter have told me that they got better deals on Twitter with a GTX 780. However, this is the GHZ edition and it did go very hard. Out of the box, it overclocked quite high and that power man, power supply, I was shocked. That thing powered this build absolutely fine. GTX 780 overclocked, X5670 overclocked, even the memory was overclocked as well. Now with the memory, this is what makes X58 so impressive. Triple channel memory, Back in the day, people said it was kind of pointless, it was useless, but fast forward nine or 10 years, and now triple channel memory, especially on this PC, is so much more relevant, especially if you wanna use this thing for competitive gaming on a budget. And that's where this PC really shines. We can see in those benchmarks, what we were getting was phenomenal performance. And I did drop the settings to stress the CPU a little bit more, and I will be doing an upcoming comparison comparing this to an R5 1600, and also the brand new 8400, so stay tuned for that. But what we saw in Dota 2, for example, was something that could get near 200 FPS most of the times. Now I did drop the graphics settings down to a medium and then put them back up to high, which did stress the GTX 780, but the performance for Dota 2 was incredible. CSGO, of course, here was a game that was doing really well too. Nowhere near as good as the new Coffee Lake variants, and I think the Ryzen CPU will even beat it in this game, but seriously, for a $40 CPU and hardware this old, it was kicking it, getting near 300 FPS 
most of the time while I was playing this game. Now granted, in the comparison, I will be using a GTX 1080 Ti to remove any GPU bottlenecks. But moving on to another title, we had PUBG, very popular at the moment. This thing on very low settings at 1080p was kicking it so hard, I was surprised. It was going over 100 FPS a lot of the times. And this is just where this Xeon really starts to shine. And we look at that Cinebench score. I recently did my comparison with the new Coffee Lake CPUs versus the 1800X. And the 8400 scored around the similar Cinebench score. This actually beat the Cinebench score I was getting on the 8400. So again, this CPU represents phenomenal value on a $25 cooler as well. I know people are gonna be like, look, you need a water cooler to overclock this thing. No, you don't. This cooler is extremely good and I'm probably giving it a dedicated video of its own because it's just that damn good for the money. But on that note, if you're looking for something to play the new car mechanic simulator, this PC did an extremely good job. Again, playing 1080p, decent settings, we we're getting good frame rates, really solid experience. I was actually surprised because the car mechanic simulator does require some decent hardware to run. So Car Mechanic Simulator 2018 was no problems for this PC. Though, two other titles I wanted to take a quick look at. Overwatch, again, 1080p, this thing just absolutely destroyed those frame rates. Really shocked at what we were getting. And also when it came to Far Cry Primal, one benchmark that's actually raised curiosity a lot lately because of how it is and how it responds with the lower latencies on CPUs, this thing scored in 100 FPS at 1080p. Though keep in mind, I did test it with the GTX 780. Though, what we got in tandem was something that's cheaper than a brand new Coffee Lake CPU, which is out of stock everywhere and you can't even buy it. And this thing came in cheaper and this is a whole PC. So if you guys are into PC gaming on a budget and you're looking for the enthusiast option, this is what you can do if you're on a strict budget. Now keep in mind, I did use a brand new hard drive. I did price up DDR3 memory on what you could get it off on Amazon. So a lot of the deals here aren't really deals that I hunt for from month to month. So I probably could get this thing even cheaper if I was really hunting for some good deals. Though, what you're looking at with a machine like this, you could probably price it between 300 USD to 400 USD. And honestly, nothing that's brand new will beat this thing in terms of price performance. It just won't happen. You've got such good power on the CPU and the GPU. And keep in mind, the power supply is still decent. Anything from a reputable brand with decent voltage on the 12 volt line is going to do you pretty well. Keep in mind there are some bad power supplies out there however, so I will put a list in the description below. Generally the Tom's Hardware list of power supplies is a good guide to go by. Also before I get on out of here, yes this is the enthusiast option if you're into tuning PC parts and building your own thing and of course hacking up a case, something like this is going to be awesome. However of course if you're not into that and you just want something more simple but you want really good price performance then you can pick up those HP those Dells and then just drop something like a GTX 1050 or a GT 1030 in there and you'll be having a decent experience. Something like this really represents my passion. It's what I'm all about. I just love the look of this thing even though it looks hideous. It's got this power button right up the top here as well so I don't even need the power button from this Dell case to turn this thing on. And of course since it's open air it does actually a really good job on cooling since the graphics card and the CPU both have an adequate amount of fans installed and of course the RPM is pretty high. So anything I had to critique about this build though, I would say it's a little bit noisy the AliExpress cooler and it was a little bit difficult to install but of course the performance for that 25 bucks is insane. Also I did make one massive mistake with this build. If you guys are watching up until now and you haven't noticed then I will say it because I don't want you guys to repeat this mistake. Essentially when I was installing the motherboard in this case, the two bottom mounts for the micro ATX motherboard were actually touching the motherboard which is a full size ATX case and that can cause shorting. So initially I couldn't boot the PC and I did have to update the BIOS anyway but it's something that I noticed as well. And so how I managed to fix this was put some electrical tape and then a bit of cardboard and then some more electrical tape in between and of course the motherboard is working fine though I could have had a damaged and busted motherboard on my hands so it's something that I did want to tell you guys about and just warn you if you do want to hack up cases like I'm doing just be careful of that that was one thing I just completely forgot about it blew over my mind because I've never really dealt with a full-size ATX board cutting up a micro ATX board before. I have cut up a mini ATX case and put a micro ATX board in and that was absolutely fine. That was the dank box. I really loved that PC. You guys loved it as well. And this kind of is like the bigger version of the dank box. 
Not only is it bigger in size, it's also more powerful too. Anyway guys, with that said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite part of Bottoms Up. Love reading your comments and thoughts as always. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on if you wanna see the videos as soon as they drop on the channel. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.